About 71% of our beautiful planet is covered with water. That's why you see the coolest blue color when you look from space compared to all the other planets in our solar system. But we're still not sure how exactly we got all that water. And what makes us so special that we ended up the only ones with water on the surface and life? Some say the water has been here ever since our planet formed. Let's jump back to that chaotic period about 4.5 billion years ago when there were clouds of gas and dust swirling across our solar system. So, somehow, water molecules settled from all that chaos and just stayed there. Land mammals dominate our planet today, but we did originally come from water. So this was the main playground for creating life. Or maybe it wasn't quite like that. Some people believe that a long time ago, our planet didn't really have much water. That implies that all of our oceans formed from the water that came from outer space. Could it be that creatures from other planets sent it because they knew it was the key element for life to form and they needed friends? As far as we know, not quite. It's more like our water randomly came from asteroids and space dust. A Japanese robot brought tiny particles from one asteroid back to Earth, and scientists found something cool. They contained water. The water in these particles was probably created because, while coming from the sun, they were interacting with oxygen in space. And that way, we got water molecules. In the outer parts of the solar system where it's very cold, water forms icy objects, such as comets. As our planet moved around the sun, it collected these dust particles along with the water. Over time, this water fell from the skies and filled what we know today as the oceans. So maybe the water on Earth came from both these space dust particles and icy comets crashing into the surface. It's more probable than the theory that our planet had water even since the beginning because it was way too hot for water to become liquid. I mean, we have the best spot in the solar system for life because we're just the right distance from the sun for liquid water to exist. Any farther than that and it would be too cold and we would end up with ice only. Any closer to the sun would mean we'd have to deal with extremely high temperatures. We've already seen that happen to our neighbor Venus, the hottest planet in the solar system. But even though we had a great position, don't forget there was no atmosphere on Earth at its early stages, so nothing could keep that water in place. When our planet first formed, it was very hot and there was almost no air around it. The surface was like a melted rock. As it cooled down, an atmosphere started to form mostly from gases coming out of volcanoes. And it took about a half a billion years for the surface of Earth to cool enough to keep water. So at those early stages, it was probably simply evaporating. If water really came to Earth later, comets and asteroids might have brought it here. Both types of space travelers came to visit once in a while, and both had enough ice to deliver the same amount of water as what Earth's oceans contain. This seems plausible, right? But we still don't know if it was an asteroid or a comet, or whether it was just one or many of them. Also, when exactly did all that happen? One way to tell which one brought us this magnificent gift is to look at the chemical composition of space rocks and compare it to that of Earth. One study showed that water molecules on Earth are very similar to the molecules of rock samples received from ancient asteroid Vesta. Vesta is the second biggest object in the asteroid belt, which is located between Mars and Jupiter. Only Ceres is bigger, and this one falls into the category of dwarf planets anyway. It's the brightest asteroid you can sometimes see even with the unaided eye. But the fact that water molecules are quite similar on Vesta and on Earth doesn't necessarily mean that Vesta was the one that brought water to us. It could be some other similar object that came from space. There are studies that have backed up the theory that asteroids brought water, like the one conducted by the Rosetta spacecraft, the first one that orbited a comet. It was also the first space probe that sent a lander to a comet's surface. Thanks to that, scientists found out that water on comets was heavier than most of the water on Earth. But then again, in 2018, there was a new study involving another comet that contained water with a similar composition as the water on Earth. What makes it different from the previous one? Well, here we're talking about a hyperactive comet. Such comets release more water as they get closer to the sun 
compare it to regular comets. When one of those regular comets gets close to the sun, its ice turns directly into a gas, and this gas can later become liquid water on the surface of a planet. But a hyperactive comet loses not only ice from its center, but also icy particles from its atmosphere. These icy particles may be the reason why hyperactive comets have water similar to Earth's. There is water in other places across our solar system too, even though it's different from the water on Earth. It's often hidden under the icy surface of moons, such as Europa and Enceladus. Europa is Jupiter's most famous moon since scientists believe there's a giant ocean hidden beneath its icy surface. This ocean supposedly has about twice as much water as all Earth's oceans combined. And where there's water, there might be life. And who knows what type of organisms we might find there one day when we finally take a trip across our solar system. Scientists discovered this ocean using a spacecraft called Galileo. Galileo orbited Jupiter and detected a magnetic field around Europa, which was a sign there might be a big, salty ocean. The surface of Europa is covered with smooth ice, but it's full of grooves and cracks with strange dark streaks and reddish features. Scientists believe the moon's surface is like that because warm ice rises from deep below. Also, Europa's icy shell squeezes and stretches because of Jupiter's insanely strong gravity. This creates heat inside the moon, which is probably enough to keep the ocean in its liquid form. Then, we have Ceres, the only dwarf planet we have in the inner solar system. It's small and difficult to study. But a few years ago, the Hubble telescope found out it was actually more of a watery world than a rocky ball like everyone previously thought. And the story remains the same. The mantle is icy, and then there's a mysterious slushy ocean underneath. Mars also has its own secret stashes of minerals that only form in water. And just like us, the red planet probably got its water from comets and asteroids that smashed into its surface. And it most likely had a lot of water on its surface, rivers, oceans, and lakes, but billions of years ago. That means Mars may have been a good spot to house life a really long time ago. But over time, the Sun ruthlessly pulled away the red planet's protective atmosphere with the help of its rather unpleasant charged particles called solar wind. As a result, liquid water on the Martian surface either evaporated and mixed with minerals or went underground and turned into ice. And this leftover water is especially interesting because it can tell us if there's still life on Mars. Plus, if we ever move to the red planet, it would be good to have reservoirs of liquid there.